imagination and fantasy. Yeah. There's so much imagination, there's so much fantasy and flair. Imagination and flair. Lack a bit of imagination and fantasy. Imagination and fantasy. Yeah. There's so much imagination, there's so much fantasy and flair. Imagination and flair. Lack a bit of imagination and fantasy. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. We're back for episode 12. Yes. Um, for our video uh, watchers, you'll see we're at a new location. Yeah. Uh, the soccer podcast is moving up. Yes, we're moving up in the world. Um, for the first time, we see we've we've been unofficially sponsored by the Football yeah, Centre. You've just plugged them without <laughs> any permission. But. I've plugged them without any permission, and uh, today we can f- officially announce we are we're not actually sponsored. We're not sponsored. We're just borrowing we're the borrowing, venue. <laughs> borrowing the venue. Um, this is my place of employment. Yep. Um, I play indoor soccer here as well. Yes. On Thursday nights. Joe does. Uh, Joe's team is. How are you going this this not season? Not good. Joe? Not good. We lost last week. It was four four. There was a minute to go, and we conceded two goals in the last minute. It's tough. One could have been my fault. Okay. But yeah, I, I think we're like fourth out of like eight teams. So it's not bad. Yeah, we're in the mix for finals, in which the, I'll take. <laughs> that's all that matters. Yeah. Um. So this is your second season. Yeah, at the football centre. How'd you go in the your first season? First season, I think we finished last about. Okay. We've had a few like MPL grade teams, which uh, destroyed us. Right. But yes. it's a learning experience. And it is a learning yeah. experience. So I will just quickly talk about wh- what the football centre is. So if you do live in Perth... Um, or like if you want to fly down here to if you play wanna, indoor. Yeah. <laughs> so indoor soccer is one thing the football centre does. Um, a night they do a men's social league. Uh, most nights of the week. If you have a son aged from... Or his daughter, aged from 2 to 13 years old... Um, you can be coached by Dean Evans and Reese Vitilia and myself. Um, Dean and Reese used to play at Perth Glory yep. and um, have been coaching quite well in Perth. And, and if you're a bit older than that, you can get some one on ones. Cool. I, I, I might need to chase that up. Booking for a one on one? Yeah, go. I want to practice my free kicks. Okay. I'm um, $100 an hour, just to let you know. Fuck, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so it's one on ones are one coach to one player, just to let you know. Yeah, all right, fair enough. So it's really, you really improve your game. Yeah, like just my free kicks though. Just free kicks. Easy, we can. done. We can. I'll, I'll book it in <laughs> after the podcast. So we've uh, we have plugged. Okay, so Joe, you went to Sydney. Yeah, I did go to. West- did Sydney. you go Western Sydney? I went to Sydney, then I went to Western Sydney for okay. a few hours. Right. And had a good experience there. It was good fun. Everyone I've I've I've, I've spoken to, and I said, oh, Joe's gone to Western Sydney to watch the glory, and they said, is Joe crazy? <laughs> oh, I was, I was I'm more bored than anything. So I was like, why not go to Western Sydney? <laughs> Um, and I said, no, he's just very passionate. Yeah. It's like my reasoning for going to West Sydney was, yes. um, what was my reasoning? I didn't oh, well, know. I think you looked pre-season. You yeah. Said. Pre-season. I was like, Western Sydney, they're looking good this they're season. Very Glory's good, yeah. looking good this season. Yep. This is going to be a good game. Yeah. I could have been more wrong. That was probably the worst, like one nil I've like ever seen. Fair enough. Like a horrible fleeky goal. Nothing really in it after that. VAR just... <laughs> Ruin, ruining everything. Yep, fair enough. Uh, the atmosphere was good, though. Okay. Like, big ups RBB. There was, like, 50 people in it, though. Okay, that's a, a low number for the RBB. Yeah, there wasn't too many of them. But, mm-hmm. no, nah, the stadium's sick. Big yeah, ups, so... Uh, the Sydney government for funding that. <laughs> but, no, nah, it was bloody awesome, yeah. Cool. So, I'd, I'd say the best football stadium in Australia. I would have to agree with I you. I think... You, have you been there, though? No, but I've heard good things, Joe. No, nah, it's yourself. awesome. I reckon it's better than Amy Park, in my opinion. I've been to Amy Park. Amy Park is quite nice. Very nice. Um, so yeah, without talking about the game, what else can you tell me about Western Sydney? Western Joe? Sydney it was about a 15 minute walk from the train station, it's, it's which wasn't too substantial. bad. Substantial. To be fair, I just went to the game and like left. Okay. Um, but well, yeah, did you no, feel safe nice. on the train home? Oh uh, yeah, I did. But like, <laughs> okay. there, was, there was a few characters on it, like a few like teens in like TNs and like they're, they're like bum bags and all that. Yeah, okay. But it was, it was a laugh. It was a laugh. It, it was, was like um, one of those uh, hooligan hefts like videos. Yes. It was like like it was like the casting for like all of them. Right, which okay. was uh, pretty interesting. Cool. Um, so, how long did you stay, Joe? Uh, two nights. Okay. Which was, yeah, good fun. Good fun. Great, good fun. Yeah. Um, any places you ate that were... Ate off. Extremely good. <laughs> On the first day, I um, ate at Grilled. Right. <laughs> so, that's a, a, a burger chain. And, Why um, fly all the way to Sydney to eat Grilled? I just wanted something that was like... I, I walked past it and it was like it was there. I was like, I know what it is. So. Grilled's in Perth, so I mean, Grilled's all around Australia. Yeah, like Big Ups Grilled. Um, no. Then, second day, uh, Nando's. You're joking. It was across the road from my Airbnb, so that's Surely fair you just look up, like, ugh, nice places to eat in Sydney. But it was so convenient. It was, like, legit right across the road from my B&B. <laughs> so you literally could have stayed in Perth. And <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. All right. If that's your idea of a holiday, Joe, we'll roll with it. It wasn't a holiday. It was an experience okay. to watch football, fair enough. I'd say. Did but you get a photo in front of the um, Sydney Harbour Bridge? I didn't even see it. Like, okay. I've been to see that many times. That like, right. I went past it on the train. I was like, yeah, that's nice. A frequent goer. Of yeah, but it was bloody humid though in Sydney. Was like, it? what's up with that? 
I don't know. We should ask our yeah. Sydney listeners. For our Sydney listeners, comment why it's humid. Why is it humid? Um, tweet us, YouTube, in the thing below. Mm-hmm. Easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty humid. Okay. Like, yeah. No, it was, it was nice. It was nice. Yeah, right. it was a good experience. I'd recommend it. You recommend it? Yeah. Okay. So, we had a... I thought this was a very intriguing round of A League. I think, for the first time ever, I watched every minute of every game. <laughs> to be fair, I think I watched two games this week, but I was in Sydney. I was away, so... He was away. He was in Sydney. Excuse. You don't have any, any excuses when you don't watch the game. No, so. <laughs> I don't. Um, I did take some vigorous notes. Yep. I was I was note-taking. And see, our Discord, on the Patreon Discord, we had some very interesting discussions on there, Joe, about the game, so that kept me engaged in the games. Um, Adelaide, Melbourne was the first game of Friday night. This game, oh, what, this game was horrible, I think. Adelaide were 1-0 winners. Um, victory had... Well, Naboot had so many chances. Yeah, that was... I felt bad for him. Blatant chances. Um, and this yeah, is he, their... Like, he's lost his mojo. It's so like in Austin Powers. He's completely lost the mojo. When like, Austin Powers loses his mojo, yep. I think the same thing's happened to him. I think so. And he needs to go back in time and find... His mojo. His mojo. Yeah, pretty much. Um, this is the fir- this was the first competitive game under Carlos Salvatore. Yep. Um, he uh, dresses very well, very formal. I don't like how Melbourne Victory have like the sponsor on like on the on the collar. Yeah, no, I don't like that. Yeah, that just looks funny. Takes it away. Um, and I thought I think Paulson, he was next to rubbish. This He's game. not good. He's just. He, Neither here he nor there. He played, so I think he played like on the, he was a left sort of, in the team sheet, he wasn't actually playing centrally. He was playing sort of on the left of side of midfield. And man, oh, he just, he was really slow. Now, Jay Barnett got his first competitive start. Shout out to Jay Barnett. Starting debut, because he did come off the bench. And unfortunately, he was, he was just off the pace. Yeah, it takes a bit to like adjust, like your first game, which is like, He's fair enough. Um, he was a bit off the pace. I did feel a bit bad for him, but I could see there was some bright sparks there. Um, Rue did get a start right back, but the story of the game was... Oh, so, Cruz got an early penalty shout, which was, we are talking on the Discord, was blatant. Did I remember this? He was just running, he just cut across the defender, just taken out, and then no penalty, VAR confirmed it, no penalty. I must have, like, got a coffee then. <laughs> it was just rubbish. Because I did watch this game. Um, Naboot had some, you know... Yeah, Naboot had some chances that... He, he just, just lost his mojo. Lost his mojo. Rue was actually... I've got a... Uh, my notes here are Storm Rue bad. So I have a soft spot for Storm, right? I do. Um, his crosses weren't very good, though. No, nah, he's getting there. He had he had that bad injury. I've got a story about Storm as well. Tell me, Joe. So last year in Melbourne, when I went to the the away day there, yep. uh, we saw like Storm after the game, and we're like, mm. "Oh, mate, when are you coming back to Perth?" And he was like, "Oh, I bloody hope so soon, mate." And they just like <laughs> laughed it off. I like that. But joke. like, was there like anything in that comment? Who knows? Who knows? Maybe I, I, I could see him coming back to Perth. I, we could use a right wing back, Joe. We could. We actually could. Maybe. How long ago was that? Last season. So you never, never know. know. Never know. But yeah, that's my story about Storm Rue. <laughs> um, Basha has been good, and Basha actually played very well in the game against Bali United, which yep. we'll talk about a little Big bit later. Bali, I'll be there soon. Um, Cru- so, it, Cruz wasn't very good. Cam Sober, actually, last night against Bali United was probably a great example. He just had to score. He he's actually a really good player. Technically, he's amazing. But. In front of goal, it just all goes wrong. He just, yeah, he, he shits the bed. And like, That's the only way to describe sometimes it. Sometimes, again, his first touch has let him down this game. But, yeah. Like, when he has the ball running, he's like probably one of the, the better players in the A-League. Yeah. And I could see why, you know, Salvatore picked him. I see why Kurtz pick, consistently picked him. Because yeah. he adds a lot to your team. But, oh, but I feel like tough. if that Marco Rojas deal does go through, then he's moved to the bench. Yeah, I think, I think it'd have to be. Um, oh, I mean, yeah, potentially. Now, moving on to Adelaide, Joe. It's interesting that, so Black, they did make a comment, I think it might have been Simon Hill, Blackwood didn't get called up for the under-23s, and Al Hassan Toure did. Yeah. Um, but Blackwood continued to play for Adelaide. Again, Blackwood, very disappointing this game. Yeah, it was neither yeah, here nor there. Halloran hasn't been doing well lately, and his goal wasn't much to the, like. The goal was just a, <laughs> he was a just goal there. mouth scrabble, and he just happened to yeah. like be there. But um, So I thought McGree had a decent game. Opseth shown signs. I like Maria. Yeah, hey, Maria. I just like watching like most games. Um, he's actually he's attacking. I like him. Gets forward. Um, Opseth was. We said he was good at the start of the year, and he sort of had a bit of injuries. Yeah. He was okay. Overall, Adelaide probably did deserve to win, um, just because victory couldn't finish. Yeah, this game could, like could have finished like nil all or, or like five five. Or like five five. <laughs> um, overall, the victory were. I thought victory were very disjointed in the first half. Um, yeah. The, the second they, half they a lot better. First half, yeah. They, 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 like, this is like the worst Melbourne victory I, I've seen in a long time. It's true. But, I mean, this is Salvatore's first game. I think they barely even trained up until this game under his management. Yeah. So, Go take time. But so, you know who I do like? Uh, what's his name? Uh, James Donachie. He's solid. There's something about him I like. Yeah. He's got a bit of... 
bit of I, I don't know what it is, but yeah. Like, even though he's probably not the best football, I just like him. He's tough as nails. Probably that. I, I, like, I don't know why, but... <laughs> Alright, Joe. Um, can we catch a flight to Brisbane? Um, yeah, is there a train? Melbourne to Brisbane, that's a, few days. That's a long way. You could ride your bike. I could do that. I don't think you could, but... But yeah, this, which was this game? This was uh, pouring down with rain for the majority of the game. Big ups, rain. We need that. <laughs> now, Joe, let's talk about Brisbane. Brisbane. I I watched like 20 minutes of this game. Okay, that, that's really good. Yeah, I missed the goal though. But... Um, so they signed Corey Brown from Melbourne Victory. He, oh, no, he actually played not bad. Yeah, so I've been always making a note how they're never playing a left-footed player on, the, on their left wing back. Yeah. I think this is actually desperately what uh, Robbie Fowler needed. He provides balance. Yeah, like left-footed Victory player. fans hated Corey Brown. He, he, he wasn't a fan favourite no. there. And like, I think Kurtz played him left wing one game, which was not... <laughs> just did nothing well, for him That's probably all. why he, got the, he lost his job. Oh, we haven't talked about that, yeah. Um, did we talk about it last week? No, because like the day after he got sacked. Ah, of course. Same okay, with so Marcus Babbel. Um, we'll talk oh, we'll, about we'll, that later. We'll talk we'll about, about that later. Okay, let's talk about Kurtz. Oh, he did get sacked it after. Yep. We talked about it in the Discord. So, Joe, what are your thoughts? I think there's so much expectation around Melbourne victory mm-hmm. that if you're doing that poorly, of course he's going to go. Yes. But I feel like a coach like Marco Kurz, he's shown at Adelaide that he's good enough to coach. Yes. But I feel like he just needs probably a bit more time. Mm-hmm. And maybe his recruiting hasn't been the best. Yes. Like, case in point, like, Paulson and Kiki Dobras haven't been the best players. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But I have to agree with you, Jojo. I feel like yeah, Marco Kerr's like any other team, he gets like more time. Mm-hmm. But yeah, just a victory because they have so much expectation mm-hmm. that yeah, that's probably why he got the sack. Yeah, I think Paulson and Kiki and Kiki have probably been like half sort of unfit, but they've been playing consistently and yeah, they've been <coughs> certainly underperforming. It hasn't helped with, you know, Naboot really well, it's only been recently really, but Naboot really not finding his ground in front of goal. Yeah, like their front three have and Sober hasn't you know as I said, very good, but it hasn't been at school and you do need goal scorers. And Cruz and Naboo were injured at the start of the year. Like, they had a lot of sort of things that haven't really gone for them. I really thought they could have kept him, to be honest. Yeah, like, there's not many times this season they've played with their strongest 11. It's true. It's true. But, yeah, that, that's football. It's a results-driven business. It is. And, yeah, the same can be said for Marcus Babbel. Kurtz didn't uh, post a very wholesome uh, thankful video. <laughs> thank you video that <laughs> Marcus Babbel did. <laughs> He was probably too angry to do that. I almost cried sad. watching Marcus Babbel's thank you video. I watched like, the first two minutes. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I, I watched it twice. I, I, I also shared it on my Facebook page. Oh, I, thought it was, I thought it really need to, needed to get out there. No, it's good for coaches to do that. Like, Marcus Babbel's connection with the fan, that's something I admire yeah. and I look for, like, in coaches. Yeah, sure. Like, he, um, did you have you seen his tattoos, Western City? Yeah, I wonder if he, if he removed the tattoo. That that would be interesting. I feel like he's just, it's ingrained in him, you know? Yeah, even though he was there for, like, 18 months, <laughs> two years. Oh, whatever. Um... Yeah, that's about it on Kurz, I think. But um, Brad, Braden Inman, I think he played good for the 20 minutes I watched. Yeah, he did. Um, Jay O'Shea actually impressed me for once. Uh, Maratovic up front actually did, did quite well. Um, yeah, um, Scott McDonald did get subbed on as well. Yes, so Scott McDonald did. And so the, the winner came from our mate Dylan Wenzel Halls. Our, <laughs> our mate. <laughs> uh, who came off the bench. But so in the first half, I noted here that Brisbane's the system. So they, they play very similar to us, Joe. The 5-4-1, yeah, the 3-4-3. Right the the yeah. They were very exposed in those pockets outside the two midfielders. And I thought Wellington actually played really well this game, especially in the first half. Um, Just move your phone away from the mic. You might mess oh, up the no. study. Did we? Okay. Let's hope. Yeah. Let's hope. Anyway, we're, we're, we're back to your go. point. Um, Wellington were very good. They were getting those, getting in those gaps. Because, you know, the three centre-backs, usually they're only marking like one to two players. So there's always a man free. And Wellington was sort of getting in those gaps but the second half, Brisbane were a lot better. I thought Wellington were probably tough to not come away with a, a point. Yeah. I thought. But no, nah, big ups to Dylan Wenzel Halls. For sure. Uh, goal of the week contender? I think so. I think it just edges out, um, what's his name? Ben Halloran's. Just. <laughs> just. <laughs> um, no, there was one moment, so it started pouring with rain, and Ufi Taylor's out there in his suit, getting wet. No, he's in, in the mix. It was just scenes. He was angry, out in the rain. This reminded me of something of Joe. This reminded me of Avram. Do you know Avram Grant? I don't know. Oh, they're, they're ex-Chelsea boss. Ex-Chelsea, and he's, he's just really old. Yeah. And so, <laughs> there was a scene, there was a, there was just a famous photo of Avram Grant, like, they won, it's like a Champions League semi-final or something, a quarter-final, and he was on his knees, and like, just praying. Yeah, Fair And enough. I thought it was raining, and in that photo, and yeah. I went back and had a look at the photo, and it wasn't raining. Okay. But, this moment of Ufi Tale on the field reminded me of Avram Grant, Fair on enough. his knees. Big so, up to Avram Grant. <laughs> that was, that was what I had to say about that, Joe. Yeah, um, that's about all from that game. I'd say so, um... Yeah. Um, yeah, then we catch a flight back to Melbourne, mm-hmm. to uh, Melbourne City, Newcastle Jets. Yes. I didn't watch this game at all. <laughs> I did. And Joe, you know what impressed me the most? 
the female referee, Kate. Uh, there are a lot, a lot, a lot, lot of, of positive feedback about that. She was so good. Like she was. She's got experience at like big tournaments as well, and all that, all that kind of. Yeah, thing. a lot like of World I Cups, think, women's World Cups, Cups yeah. um, the Ups. W League. So I genuinely think she needs to referee a lot more games because she's better than eighty percent of the referees. Oh, out there. wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, so big ups to Kate. Um, Craig Deans. I'm pretty sure. I'm fairly certain he's taking charge for the rest of the year. Okay. Um, in Newcastle, and when I. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure that was right. Um, but like, why couldn't they just keep keep Merrick? Like the squad is so bad, they're not going to do anything better. Yeah, like they a coach isn't going to fix anything now. Yeah, it's just yeah. Um, I really think they could they have kept Merrick for the rest of the year, especially with like Wes Hallahan still out. Like exactly. Ah oh, well, what, what, what can you do? They did show um, signs of life this game, um, but yeah, Craig Noon's goal. Um, let me just think. McLaren back again. McLaren was like 15 goals for him now. Yeah, good on him. Uh, it was very good, and. Uh, so, Melbourne City signed Susayeta from Athletic Bilbao. Yeah. Uh, I think he's been there for like a really long time. He's probably. been like a club player. It's probably like a B-Tech Diego Castro. I think if Susayeta finds form, because I've... He, if you watch his highlights, his, you could watch Castro's highlights and you could compare yeah. them. But you can say, watch like any player's highlights and like they'll be amazing, you know? It's true. It's like, true. They are the high, they are, they're not the low lights. Yeah, and how they're going to perform at a hot Sunday night at NIB Stadium. It's very you true. Know? Very or HBF true. Park, I should say. Um, I do think Susayeta will be... A good player once he gets going, he'd be like when he's in fi- when he hit form, uh, fine to come finals time. But yeah, um, um, how did a fan favorite of the show uh, Arroyo go? Um, I've got a note here that I don't understand, so <laughs> I um I must take a while ago. I think he did okay. I think he did okay. Now, J- like Jacob Italiano, no, sorry, Lewis Italiano, very bad headline, but decent keeper. He's, yeah, but he's alright. Needs to fix the headline. He's a good MPL keeper. I think he really needs to shave it off. Um, now, Newcastle had their chances. Kane Shepherd had an absolute sitter he missed. It was just like a cross-in. I yeah. think it might have been from... I'm not sure who it was. It might have been from Miller. He actually had a decent game. And I made a note here, Joe, because Kane Shepard's from the MPL. Yeah. And I talk about the system a lot. But all the MPL players, like, can't shoot. It's true. And they're not very good. Like, Cam Sober, the Central Coast one. What's his name? Uh, Murray. Murray. Even though he scored a nice header the other week. Kane Shepard. Um, so, my, so, Joe, I mentioned the system. Yeah. I want to talk about the system for a little bit. Yeah. So... My theory of to why our Australian young players are rubbish mm-hmm. is because when you're from 9 to 12, that's like the most important year of your development, your learning. Interesting. Uh, they're called the skill acquisition phase. Okay. You acquire skill very quickly. Yeah. But there's no actual good coaches in that 9 to 12 age group. If you get, your, like, if you get a coaching license, the majority of your, the coaches are going to move on to like coach 13 to 18. Yeah. That's like what coaches do. And I feel like we need really, really good coaches in that 9 to 12 age, and we're not getting them. Fair that's enough. That's my theory on the system, Joe. Yeah, it <laughs> makes sense to me, yeah. Makes sense to you? I have no, I've no input, I know nothing about it. Okay, well then, there you go. Yeah. I'm glad enough. you agree with me. Um, oh, Craig Noon had really bad interviews. Really bad interviews? Yeah, like, a pre, he had a pre and post match interview. a nice goal. Nice goal, but very bad well, interviews. What was, ba- what was bad about it? He was so, like, he just spoke very monotone. No energy. Uh, pre and post match, boring. Maybe he's very just, like, boring. focused on the game too much. That interviews, he doesn't want to expel too much. Like energy into it <laughs> was to save that for the game, and maybe that showed in him scoring. Potentially, knows, potentially. Ah, uh, but they were very boring. It was a nice goal. I saw the goal. It was a nice goal. Um, how did McLaren score? Believe it may have been a penalty. It's, the it, game was it, quite a while it ago. It sounded like. A, a oh, it was a penalty. Yeah, Jamie, Jamie Mack. Yeah, it was yeah. a penalty. Right. Fair enough. Good on. Oh, you. and this game, Bozza did so. Oh, that's right. The penalty was for the handball on Nikolai Torpor Stanley. Oh yeah, I saw that. That's a penalty. That is a penalty, and referees made a good decision. But uh, Bozza in the post match uh, on Fox. Did you see him doing his little two Yeah, he was like doing yeah, the teapot. He was trying to, yeah. <laughs> it was like, like, it was like, how do you jump without like, you jump? moving your hand? Which is fair enough. Which is fair enough. So Tor- no, nobody knows that anymore. No, Torpo Stanley was talking about was talking to the ref about how he should jump. Yeah. Um, and I don't really know how. Because... <laughs> but yeah, like his hand was like all the way up there. Which is like... You need to sort of be like, for our video yeah. listeners. Some sort of modest... Video watchers. Video watchers. Yeah. Video watchers. Um, so Melbourne City, two new winners... Good on him. Oh, talking about Bozza, I was, mm-hmm. he was at the West Sydney game. I oh, was. He? I sorry, I saw him in the flesh. He's a, he's actually a monster. He's a big man. He's a, he's like a big man. I'd say close to two meters to oh, about one ninety. I'd say one ninety. Okay. And he'd be like one ten kg. Like yeah, he's he's hundred kg. He's, he's a big boy. He's a big boy. Actually, there was a thing uh, before the Glory game. Uh, he was interviewing. I think it was Patrick Ziegler. Yeah. Or Pat. Yeah, Patrick Ziegler. And they went like. Um, oh, scuba diving. Scuba diving. Yeah. <laughs> and so Bozza just sort of like, and they were in their wetsuits and like Bozza. Didn't want to do it, and Patrick went in, and now he's got like mad respect for Patrick. Yeah, fair enough. Big ups, uh, diving. Big up, I wouldn't dive with sharks. 
If I'll do it in a oh no, I wouldn't even do it in a cage. No, yeah. I wouldn't do it at all. That's that would see you. Too scary. That would see you. Um, but yeah, the n- next game. Was, was uh, the Western Sydney Wanderers no, and the Mariners? No, it wasn't. It was it wasn't. Western, Western United, not Western Oh, sorry, West, sorry, Western United and the Central Coast Mariners. Joe, um, thank you for that. 3 0 to uh, Western United. So we're going to rename Kai Rolls to Kai Own Goals. Kai Own, yep. I'll, I'll give you that. <laughs> so he scored one own goal this game, and like. It was I last week or the week before, he scored another own goal. He scored an own goal last week, own goal this week, but he really, like. The, uh, he scored another goal was deflected off him yeah and I really think that was off target I think it was Borussia's and it should have been he should have two own goals right? oh, well. I mean a hat trick of own goals in yeah. two weeks um, but the Mariners just started very very poorly yeah very oh, that was like 3-0 in like 21 minutes that's not good did you see Borussia's header to open the scoring was that oh, from Diamante's Diamante's cross oh, Diamante's pass was amazing it was very good um, I feel uh, that's sorry. What, that's what like they've, they've been missing the last few weeks. His passing has been up to standard, but he's back now. He's back, but now he's injured. He did get injured in this game. He did come off. Uh, I think he got. It was more like a, a knock, more than yeah. A, but his good vibes will like heal himself. Regeneration. Like, he definitely has like crystals that like heal him. I feel like right. And like he recharges them every day. Good, good vibe crystals. Yeah, he puts them out on the balcony. And gets like the sun rays. Yep. And yeah, yep. I think he'll be right. He'll play this week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good <laughs> I like it okay I feel sorry for the Stadge man because he's a nice guy you know he gives some good interviews yeah but his team is rubbish unfortunately yeah unfortunately yeah like, he's um, the best player like Milan Juric probably just because prob- he can like kick a ball good Jair has been oh Stens- the young boy Stensness has been good He's been a, a bright spot. And Tommy Orr, he's off to MacArthur. That's been confirmed now. Yeah, I yeah, that was we also said about talked about. I like how like he's playing like left back all the time now. And when like MacArthur announced it, they were like, Oh like former soccer he's forward. Left winger, yeah. But like yeah, no, nah, he's a defender. I feel that like quite bizarre that he is like he has to play the whole season with them now. And they know. Yeah, but he's he'll still try his best. Like he he's, will. A, he's a professional. But the vibes aren't there, yeah. Yeah, the vibes aren't there. At the marriage. Oh, uh, well, maybe he'll give like a young kid a shot, who knows? Potentially. They, they are giving quite a few young kids a shot. Also, with Central Coast, um, the young fella, Silvera, he's trialling with LAFC. Interesting. Yeah. Apparently, their fee's being negotiated for around like 400000 or something. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, who knows? That, yeah. I reckon the Mariners could do like it. All, all, the, all the best. What's his name? Sam? Yeah. Sammy. Yeah. Silvera. Yeah. Oliveira. Sammy. S- Sam Silvera. Silvera. Yeah. Right. Uh, Jaya was bad. De Silva was rubbish. Uh, Stensness was good. Jordan Murray actually did all right. Um, but just at the... Yeah, they were just... They didn't start well and they couldn't really recover. Yeah, um, I, I didn't watch the game, so no comment. No comment. Uh, Apart oh, from Diamante's pass. Diamante's pass. Max Burgess was so impressive. You've watched this game. Um, he played as forward, sort of in the front three. Very good for West United. Jonathan Asperonimitis. Yep. Not going to say that. I'm not going to try. Uh, had a good game. And he's former... He's played the Mariners, so good on him. Let's see. Oh, did, all the best. Did my mate... Oh, my mate Apostolos Stamatolopoulos came off the bench. I'm not going to try to <laughs> say that as well. What's with, like, Central Coast and, like, all these... Like, no, uh, West United. What? Apostolos. It's all the Greek fellas, like big ups, love you. I'm not going to try saying names though. I rate how Stamatolopoulos is a number nine. Is the number what nine. What position does he play? He's a forward. Oh, he's, and like he's a, a number nine. Yeah, I like how he's the number nine. Barisha's not number nine. Barisha's not 18. Maybe, yeah, because he signed probably before Barisha, that's why. It's true. Uh, it's like, yeah, it's okay. like uh, Four Neroli when he signed for Glory. It was like, hold up the shirt, it was like number 10. Mm-hmm. But now he's number nine. It's true. Do you know, and Kilkenny's 88 still? Yeah, Because he, he wanted eight. Number. Yeah. He wanted eight. And but then, he had the chance to get eight. eight. But he still 88. But he kept it. That was like Dino wanted... Did Dino, did Dino 66? Yeah, it was like 66 for like a few weeks. He wanted six, but... It's okay. Ah, well. Big ups Dino Jewel, bitch. Mm. I call the best with your injury, mate. Yeah. Um, is, that, is that anything else from this game? Um, that was about it. I think, yeah, West United... They do sit very deep. And they do like to do this. They were up... The like Mariners had some spells of possession. Um, but I think... I think it's all back to normal for the inevitable Mark Rudin. Yeah, how did uh, Kone play? He was good. It was good. This was his first game back after. Injury. I think so. I think he did yeah. come off for your tech, but I thought it was good to have him back in the A League. Go, I was impressed. Um, but like, were there vibes between him and Diamante? There were. Of course well, at the start was. of the game, though, it was just all, it was just they were yeah, all them. Yeah, they were vibing. Like, I'd love to be like mates with them too. Oh yeah, just secretly for sure. They definitely go to the beach. Hundred percent. Um, Diego Castro has been seen at uh, Scarborough, I think. So we mentioned this last week. Was it? <laughs> he was there again. Oh, he's there again. Okay. Yeah, is, my, it, my, is he with Paul Rowley? Told me. No, nah, because the, the guy who's there, like, he doesn't know any other players apart from Castro. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, this is like Castro. He's like with someone. I was like, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Joe, go on the time quickly. Um, yeah, we've got 24 minutes at the moment. Should we go for a... I'll give it a few more minutes. All right. <laughs> okay, so um, the next game was... Uh, that was the one I was at. The one you were at, Joe. It was, it was the worst game I could have gone to. Even though, good to see Glory win, but like, it wasn't exciting at all. The mighty Perth Glory. Um, w- the Glory just professional. 
Yeah, Popper, like, Popper's I know how got to grind him going. Popper's got him going. Very professional. Right. Six on the trot now. A new club record for him. Eighteen points in a row since Marcello started. We haven't lost. We haven't yeah. not won a game. Marcello, I love him. Oh, he's so he can good. like pass the ball. He's tall. Headers, everything. He does everything. So good. I think uh, Reddy. So the clean sheets. Obviously, the centre backs are doing well. Yeah. But Reddy's been solid. Reddy has been. So he made a nice save in the first half after yes. the Muller's volley. Yes. Oh yeah, it was very good. Yep. Um, Sum Byum Kim had probably one of his better games. Yeah, he did like a nice like karate like chop thing with his leg or whatever. <laughs> he did, he did. That, that's what I noticed from him really. But <laughs> um, because no, I think Franish had a niggle, so that's why. But even like Brimmer played very good as well. Yeah, Brimmer. He, he's a pretty solid corner off the goal. Mm-hmm. His nice hold up play. Mm-hmm. It was a real yeah, it was a real like um, grinding goal deflection. Yeah, but even just for the Wanderers, they're just lacking like they had a few a lot of good chances. Yeah. But yeah, crossing the ball, there's no real target. They were sta- like to be fair, like, I just think it's. T- Tough sacking um, bubble, but they, it was a serviceable performance. Like they were decent. Yes, especially against like one of the better teams, like the most informed team yeah, in the league. Pretty much. Um, like, on paper, it was a four-two-three run, but there was a, it was a three-five-two essentially. It was I think it was Georgievsky and Kamau on each wing. Yeah, they did get the goal ruled out for. Yes. Was that, was, was that handball? Your ball was no, handball. That was, yeah, it was your ball. Yeah. I reckon it was handball. This is why I don't like VAR because when Western Sydney scored, crowns went nuts. The stadium announcer is like, oh, goal, da 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 da. Like, everyone's like celebrating, then they go, oh, hold up, lads, not nah, cancel that out. And it just kills the vibes. I thought, yeah, I thought the goal would have stood. But even like Joel, yeah, can offside twice. Uh, yes, twice. he did, yes, yeah. yes, he did score a decent goal. Was he did score two offside goals? Oh, two. he did, he did. He did right, yeah. Yeah. Both, both left foot, left foot, first half. Yeah, um, yeah, he just needs a time, he's run a little bit better. And um, he'll be like, one of them was very bolter. close, though. <laughs> the second one, yeah. The first one was well off. Um, so. Like yeah, Western Sydney Wanderers, they were just they were serviceable, but they were very stagnant. I think Bozard talked about it. there wasn't a lot of movement up front, and I have to agree yeah. with him. Yeah, um, like they could have had uh, like another goal, just wasn't their day. I feel like pretty much they were structured. They just were very stagnant. Even Glory didn't have no real other chances apart from the goal. They re- they didn't. Well, yeah. Besides the the two yeah. um, Chinese opportunities. Yeah. Now the Perth Glory bench was very thin this game. We had four players on the bench. Yeah, five including a goalkeeper. Uh, both the Popovich's got to run. Yeah, in a um, win. Yeah, that, that, they, they didn't really do anything. I think no. Gabriel came on the last ten minutes just to run. Yeah, but yeah, that was about it. Yeah, they offered nothing. I don't feel like even yeah, even Trout. He just was solid. I would like to see Daningham. I would like to see. He's been in the youth team for a long time. It's true. And they did sign him from Brisbane. Like I feel like they really need yeah. to give him an opportunity. Um, I feel like we'll just stop for the video. Okay, we'll do that now. Okay. All right, we're back. Um, <laughs> what were we talking about? Um, I can't remember. Yeah, the Popovich. Popovich. <laughs> I love Spencer. I love it. Um, so I would like to see Daniel get a shot. They did sign him from Brisbane, so yeah. um, I want to see. I want to see more Harold. Yeah, once D'Agostino is back from from the have to Oli see Roos, him. We have to he'll see. be back. I want to see him start in the Champions League. I want to see it, Joe. Yeah, for sure. Um, but overall, very solid, very professional. Yeah, they're just ground at that result. Popovich was very vocal on the sideline. Yeah, like he was it. a bit animated. Even I noticed that. Now I feel like obviously that's his style, but if you know. If he's, or, I don't feel like there's much. Uh, it depends what coach type of coach you are. Because some coaches, there's not much to say on the sideline yeah. because you've said your team talk. Yeah. The boys know their philosophy. You go out and you execute. What kind of coach are you? I used to be a very vocal coach, okay. and then I had a, an epiphany. Uh, well, okay. And I said I'm over coaching, Joe. Yeah, I, you know, you can't I, do that. You need to let, let the players be free. Exactly. I need to develop the philosophy in training. You train hard, Joe. Yeah. You train hard and smart. Yeah. Develop the philosophy, and then match day, they need to execute. Exactly. So, yeah, training, you want to train hard so you can play Yeah, easy. be very vocal in training. Yeah, exactly. But the game, you need to be a, uh, a firm figure, but not, yeah. a, not a vocal one. Do you uh, get out the hairdryer every now and then? What do you mean? The hairdryer. Like, like you a, just, like, a... roast your kids. <laughs> uh, very rarely. Yeah. I have done that. Um, it was some s- specific circumstances leading up to yep. the roast. Yeah, had like a lot going on. It was. It was. Um, it was a semi-final. It was. A, it was a very big game. Oh, okay. And we we lost. I roasted them after the game. Okay. Yeah. That's fair the enough. behaviors weren't very good. Yeah. Wasn't very good. Behavior. Yeah. And he's like discipline them. That's true. It's like, yeah. Fair enough. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> anything else? So Babel. Oh, so we can talk about. Babel. Oh, Babel. Yeah. So he was very um, uh, s- silent on the sidelines. Yeah. He, relaxed. He, he probably yeah, knew what was going to happen. But as I said, like. And I know we talked about the 40 games and 10 wins. So that's 41 games and 10 it's wins. That's not too good. Um, and and so they've given it to John Paul Dimarini, the assistant yep. coach for the, I think he's the caretaker at the moment. Yeah. And there was a great question asked. And and that he said, you know, John, you've been taking a lot of the sessions with Marcus on the on the training field. Yeah. Do you feel somewhat responsible for oh, the so. team's performances? And he completely avoided the question. 
And great question. And he should be responsible. I really don't think they should be giving it to him. He'd be definitely partly responsible. Partly responsible. Like, like he'll get like the gig until the end of the year. Yeah. So like after that, they'll probably get like another foreign else. Apparently, they're looking um, locally. There It'd was a good. Herald Sun article, Sydney Morning Herald. Mm-hmm. Actually, they, apparently they're looking like at NPL coaches. Fair it's like good to see. Because like Mark Rudan, um, what's his, the other one? Uh, what from the NPL? Yeah, Mark Rudan was it? Maybe he's the only one. He, he was Nick from NPL. Yes. Like all the Aussie coaches in Australia, most of them, Scott Miller from a the lot Jets of them have been like Nick doing the NPL. Well, some have been really good, like say Popper, Ufak Tale. Yeah, yeah Tale was in NPL, I think. Maybe. Well, he was with Sydney, and I assume before he would have been at an NPL yeah. team. No, I, I want to see Aussie coaches. I do, Joe. I agree. Um, yeah, that's that game. Yes. Um, Actually, you reminded me of something, Joe, that article that we will speak about. Oh, okay, about. yeah, we'll get to that later. Um, but yeah, Champions League was last night. Um, that was a victory against Bali United. Bali United. This was a... <laughs> this was a fun game to this watch. This was a fun game to watch. This it had was. like a pre-season feel about it. It did. It was like... <sighs> Bali... So that's in these experienced European players that were technically quite good. Yeah, like that was like... Well, I had one guy who was a European. Yeah, okay. I, I, can't remember his name. Can't remember his name. Um, actually, I'll get the team that team this up. But um, it was a very intriguing game. They were just one criticism of Asian football, Joe. Yeah. Is they're technically very good. Yeah. However, physically not very good. Yeah. So like they're some of them are quite small. Um, they're just some of them not not as fit, not as strong, and that I could see that. Here. This is like Harry Suter, that's six foot five, seven yes. for soccer. Is that's why he scores in every game. It's true. Um, and I know a lot of the Asian teams, not so much. Uh, what well, just I think. A, Chinese and Korean, um, they sign a lot of big, strong Europeans as their imports because they yeah. get like a few imports a year. Yeah, just to strengthen the team. Um, but very fun to watch, Joe. Yeah, uh, final score was five nil. Um, who s- scored? So um, we had Basha. That was a great goal. Basha opened the scoring. Pope, no, not Pope. Hope. Hope. Yeah, Hope um, scored. Even though he wasn't, I still don't think he's a great player. But I'm I think he's alright. I'm glad he got I, I think Hope's alright. Yeah, he's okay. Um, Elvis finally scored. It was great to see him score. Finally. He had that chance in the first half where... He had so many chances as well. He played so well. Like, the came off the post, the goalkeeper. Yeah. Oh, my God. But no, he was, like, definitely cursed by, like, an African witch doctor. Yeah, I th- really do think uh, the witch well, doctor I think the curse him. is fin- finally lifted. You think? <laughs> I think uh, so. Well, after the goal. I hope so. After the goal, you think so. Um, yeah, it was good to see Toivon and back as well. He, he was. scored a ball of Off goal. the bench. Yeah, great goal. Um, he scored... There's one I'm missing. Yeah, I think I went... Oh, Cruz did go on the score sheet. Cruz did score. But yeah, um, Naboot only Naboot who couldn't score. He had a few chances. I think as well. he has the witch. He's got multiple witch doctors on him. Yeah, it's gone from Elvis to the other fella to Andrew. But oh, well, um, but entertaining game. Um, Bali had the chances in the first half. They could have easily scored. They did, and you know I was actually quite impressed with them. To be honest, like, I was thinking about putting a bet on them. They're paying nine bucks. Yeah, <laughs> in that first half, I was like, Fuck, yeah, it could be because I think it was at one before they conceded the second. Yeah, it was one nil to victory, and they had like three great decent chances. Great opportunity. Like any other day, they score those. Yeah. Oh, what can you What can you do? And I think like in general, their fitness levels could have been probably off an A League team. Because I know in most of the Asian leagues, it's their preseason at the moment. Yeah. Meanwhile, over here, midway through. It's true. it's true. So that's why I think victory next week against other best in Cashmere Antlers. They are, which are a tough team. Yeah. So that's the only thing I reckon that could get them over the line could be their fitness. Could be their fitness. Yeah, I have to say so. I think there was one time. I remember it might have been last year before Adelaide played. I think they were a Chinese team in pre-season mm-hmm. and that last one was quite embarrassing. Yeah, apparently like oh, what the Hulk's team was in like Sydney the other week. Oh, really? Yeah, they were like pitches with like Hulk and Oscar just like around like just random clubs. Very nice, very nice. Yeah. That's all we have to say about that really. Pretty much. Um, the victory, it's good to see them getting a good win. Um, <laughs> just want to pause it. Yeah, uh, let's give us two seconds. Okay. All right, we're back. I uh, just got interrupted. Yes, uh, the football centre, the big rolling door open and someone just walked in, so... Yeah, uh, there was like one of those soccer mums left her coffee cup behind. Her coffee cup, <laughs> yeah, two yeah, coffee cups. Yeah, good. Good. She's using a keep cup. Yes. Good for the environment. Very good. We should come out with our own. I think. Good for the environment. Bad for the podcast. But that's okay. Um, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Spencer, good idea. Good idea. Yeah, I know Spen- we- <laughs> Spencer just said maybe the Patreon subscribers could get uh, a keep cup. A keep cup at the ten dollars here. Ten dollars. Yeah, that's it. Fair okay. enough. Actually, Joe, you're thinking we'll about because um, you got a you got some interest from a company that they wanted to. Uh, Did I? You said they wanted to let you. They want to join a, a corporate tier that that we, they can officially. Okay, yeah. Oh, these are like our mates. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, I still can't talk about it. Uh, just league, for, oh. for legal <laughs> reasons. Legal reasons. Okay. But yeah, th- th- there are talks about a corporate sponsor. A corporate sponsor yeah. tier. Yeah. Um, on the Patreon. Now, Joe, there was an article this week. My father brought it up to me. Yeah, good old Tony. He read it out. in the West Australian on Saturday, and it did get traction on the internet. Do you guys get it delivered, or you just read it online? Uh, I think he, he got it at work. So okay. I, I went to the find online, but I couldn't find this section. Okay, yeah. So enough. this was like people write into the West Australian and they write an article. Now I'm going West to re- Australian's a newspaper in, in Western Australia. Australia, if you didn't, if you didn't know. Yeah. I'm going to read the whole thing out because I think it's absolutely hilarious. 
So, this is from John McLean, who lives in Leeming. This is in, like, the letters to the editor. Letters actually. to the editor. And they did publish this. And the headline is, Why bother with soccer? I note Tony Sage is grizzling about Perth Glory having to play in high temperatures. The reference to an article. Local soccer tragics keep referring to soccer as the world game, quote-unquote. So can somebody please explain to me why, if it is such a fabulous game, it is played in summer in Australia, whereas everywhere else in the world is played in winter? If this stupid game does not even have enough local street cred to be played in its correct season, then why persist with it at all? The Aussie summer is all about cricket, tennis, surfing, etc. A dumb, pommy game like this has no place here. How... What's his name? (laughs) John McLean. John McLean. Get a grip, mate. I mean... It's firstly, he's being racist. He's calling out, it's a dumb, like, the word pommy, I, like, you could reference anything, if it was nice. wogs, yeah. I don't think that would publish yeah. it. Well, fair point, it could be. I don't like it, John. Now, John, first off, if we play in winter, we won't even get any screen time. Like, we're competing with yeah. the, like, the AFL. Now, like, Tony said, did do an interview during the week, and he, he came up with a few good reasons why it is played in summer. Okay, yeah. One, it was to, like, to correspond with all the FIFA windows, like the transfers and all that. Yes. Other one was to coincide with Europe. Mm-hmm. And third was to correspond with the Asian Champions League. Exactly. No, it's, like, that does make sense. Like, there's pros and cons to winter and summer. Does this guy understand that, like, in England, it's quite cold? And in Australia, it's quite hot? Yeah, there's different climates in it. There's different climates when, when you cross the globe, John. So, he's, his point is irrelevant because he's saying, if we play in our winter and England play in their winter, it's not at the same time. Yeah. Like, that is... Mate. He just, he just seems like one of those like, grumpy, like, AFL supporters. Grumpy, like, like, old... You know, Australian don't like I it. I bet he has like a Fremantle Dockers like tattoo or something. Fremantle Dockers tattoo. He he, <laughs> he drinks Phoebe's. Phoebe's or oh, no? He definitely like forex gold or something. Okay, forex gold. John, mate, this is just pathetic. Yeah. How, no, am I more am- amazed how the West Australian publishes this? Because it's the anti-soccer the West, narrative. The joke. West Australian hates like soccer in general. Like the back page of it yesterday was about some Eagles player wearing like new footy boots. Oh, if Nick Nat got a haircut, it's the back page. Yeah, and there's like. The football on tennis, not even the tennis made the back page. It was like some footy player wearing new boots. Why is AFL getting the headlines, Joe? I, yeah, it it, infuriates it, me. It, it's the Murdoch media. It's the media. The There's too many anti-football narratives, Joe. And I tell you what, yep. who's fighting our cause? Simon Hill. Big ups, yeah. He, he loves the he fight. Always fight. He fights the good cause. He, he releases plenty of articles. Um, He's my favourite person, I feel like. He is, Joe. Just ever. <laughs> Just ever. I agree. I agree. Uh, John McLean, mate. Yeah. Get a group. Um, what, what's next on, on uh, agenda? Our Twitter questions. Twitter que- yeah, I'll, I'll get those up. <clears throat> um, Francis asks, um, three or four at the back? I like three. I do like three. But four, I like four as well. So, three, so you've got you to be coached well. Because when you're yeah. not coached well, three at the back, it can all go wrong. I like four at the back. Like I, I do love a 4-3-3 four, three, three formation. Okay, it's quite functional. Quite, yeah. you know. uh, but you've got to be, be coached well for three at the back. Like the Gloria. Like the Gloria and uh, Western Sydney. To Western an extent. Sydney, to an extent, yeah. Yeah. Um, Brisbane. Brisbane. But yeah, Josh Lenzo asks, who would win in a fight, Andy Keogh or Matt Simon? Oh, Simon Matt would Simon. Matt Simon. Sure. <laughs> yeah. He's just a shaka him or something. Yes. <laughs> That's a no-brainer. Um, John asks, mm-hmm. when will Liam Reddy pull out the Alison Becker 100-metre knee slide? Probably soon. I don't think he can run that far. If Glory win the GF, he's going to bring out the 100-metre oh, knee okay. slide. Fair enough. But I then, could see maybe an Asian Champions League. Yeah, that Liverpool game was like it was good as well. Very, very good. Like good footy kick to wherever it was. Yeah. And yeah, good Golskis. <laughs> um, this is an interesting one. Um, fuck Mary Kill, Archie Thompson, Andy Harper, Mark Bosnich. I'm not, not Andy I'm, Harper, Adam Peacock. Adam Peacock, sorry, I'm not prepared to answer this. I'm not either. It's um, it, you know what? To, to kind of make a point, Archie Thompson. It was the Bali United game. Yeah. He, they, they went to him on the sideline. He spoke for a good 30 seconds to a minute. And you know what? It was, it was coherent. There's a big difference like him at the start of the season to now. He so much improved. improvement. He's big improved. Ups, actually, we were giving him lots of hate. We though. were. <laughs> but now he's... Now he's I think he's up. actually... He's a credible journalist. And he gave so much love to like oh, Elvis Camp sober after he the did. game as well. Elvis Camp Butcher. Elvis Camp Butcher, I like to yeah. call him. <laughs> oh, so, like Vince Rigari came in, one of the journalists out at Sydney Morning, Sydney Morning Herald? Somewhere. He yeah. was like... He, he called his name Elvis Can't Score Bra, which I, I, I thought was quite funny. <laughs> Much like Kai own goals. Yeah, Kai own goals. But no, good to see Elvis score. Liverpool winning the league. And knee slides, big ups. <laughs> um, Brad Smithy asks, with ACL kicking off, which A-League team is best placed to do well? Like, geographically, Glory is best placed. 
<laughs> You're correct. Just because we're just a lot we closer. Are, we are very well placed. But victory, big game against Cashman Antlers. I'd, I'd be impressed if they won. Yeah, I would. Um, I'm sure Sydney will... I'd actually like to see Sydney. They really haven't done well in the competition. No. Nah, Glory have never been in Never been. So I'm so excited for it. I'm looking forward to the first game against um, El-, El Shadawi. Yeah, it'd be so good. I reckon I reckon Glory will go better than Sydney. Pop has got that experience. Yeah. Because who's oh, cause they've got Andrew's team, Sydney, Yokoshima yes. or whoever. Uh, Marinos. Yeah. <laughs> Yokohama Marinos. Yeah. Something. Yeah, that sounds right. About right. Uh, I reckon Glory will do the best. Yeah. Um, best place as well. Best place, yeah. I'm looking forward to it as well. Mm-hmm. On a Wednesday night, Feb 11 is the first game. Mm-hmm. Have you got your tickets? I haven't. Yeah. Oh, you're like a corporate anyway, so yeah, just daddy will get them. <laughs> no, no, you. you can't get them for the Asian Champions League games because it's not linked to the FFA. Oh. Not linked to the A League. Interesting. Interesting. Tony Pinata. Tony Pinata, get us you. some tickets. Um, anyway, uh, Armin van Norman asks Are the type of coaches we have in the A League the problem, or is it the lack of football knowledge high up, which is seeing the game on the pitch deteriorate? <sighs> To an extent, yeah. But well, it has, like... And to an extent, what? At club level, there's... I don't know, like, the board, especially, yeah, like, Western Sydney. Yeah, so we're talking about the board. Because I think the coaches yeah. are fairly educated. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's hit and miss between each clubs. But, yeah, like, the board says a lot in the coaching. And, yeah, if, if a club is run like the West Sydney at the moment, mm-hmm. and they have last five years, they've just had chopped and changing coaches, yep. it has to be something with the board. Yeah, no, I have to agree. I mean, it happens... Uh, um, Happens a lot. The backroom staff in a lot of sports can make a big difference. I know in the NBA and basketball, it's massive. Yeah, there's been like a lot of uproar about Western Sydney recently. And like they're saying it's the board's fault. Board, board, it's yeah. been like the last one ever since Popper's left. Mm-hmm. Western Sydney have been haven't just, got it right. Yeah, neither here nor there. No, I think we like the Australian coaches. I mean, there's certainly good Australian coaches out there, and the foreigners we've got in, I think, are capable. Um, so I don't really think it's the lack of um, the lack of quality coaching. I have to say. And there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of businessmen, especially, you know, FFA, you could argue, you could say the FFA are rubbish. Um, the people behind the scenes are not doing well. There is a new FFA CEO as well. This leads there us is. to our next question um, from Dennis Fernandez. Uh, did he listen to the new FFA CEO, James Johnson's press welcome? Do you know anything about this? His past. About his past and what he could potentially bring to the game? I hope you can answer this one, Joe. I didn't watch it. <laughs> What? But no, it's good. It's like it's out of. It's who was the the old one? Was it Lollip? Gallup. Yeah, good to see Gallup gone. And yeah, hopefully with like independence in the A League and FFA, hopefully that can come to fruition. And yeah, just, I, I yeah. do agree. I think we're gonna we're gonna um we're not gonna watch it now. Yeah, but we will watch that, and we're gonna yeah. get a better response. I'll watch Dennis it next Fernandes week. Yeah, next week. Because yeah, I haven't really looked into that at all. Here's a good question. I like this uh, from Yusuf. He asks, "Do you think Hulk ever says you remind me so much to?" You? I can't read. He says, do you think Hulk ever says, you remind me so much of your auntie to his current missus? So do you know the story about this? No. Hulk? no. So Hulk, the former Russian, yes, he played Premier for Zeno, now yeah. he's in China. Yeah. So he dumped his missus from like six years and started going out with her niece, <laughs> which is interesting. And apparently she's like 12 years younger as well. That's very interesting. It's like, fair enough. Um, but so yeah, did, in relation to the question, do you think Hulk ever says, you remind me so much of he, your auntie? I think he's There's a prob- fair chance. He probably would say that. Yeah. But yeah, it's a weird uh, scenario. Very there. strange. Um, yeah, next question. You can read that. Did, uh, did Marcus Babble seem dressed like an alpha male middle manager on casual Friday for his final game as Wanderers boss? I have to agree. I think he did. No, he looked pretty swazzy, I feel like. Um, but it, it was casual Friday-ish. Yeah, Robbie... F- as, as Robbie Fowler that always dresses that Robbie like Fowler Friday. needs to work it out um, yeah that's true um, but it was it's we're going to see we're not going to see a, a better dressed manager in the early than Marcus Babel do uh, probably not for a long time not at least while. not for a while I remember Kenny Lowe a former Perth, Gro- Perth Glory boss mm. last minute I've just like, had a stroke or something <laughs> yeah I do remember um, Kenny Lowe he's yeah, coaching he's ECU Dune Lab now ECU Dune Lab big the, up, so uh, I might head to some of those games this in season. the Perth NPL yeah, I got a question from uh, Loch Ness as well yes. he says yeah about the West Sydney board They've really had one successful coach and two un- two unsuccessful marquees. Yeah. Uh, is the CEO to blame? I think partially. If a club's run badly for an extended period of time, mm-hmm. it's not so much the coach's fault, it's more upstairs. It's true. I mean, Tony Pinata has been doing a great job with the glory. Yeah, love And Tony. Peter Philopoulos, who was the CEO before him, also did a great job. Um, we won't speak before that. Yeah. <coughs> so, since the glory have had... Um, I don't want to... Phrase it harshly, but you know we've had good CEOs recently, and the club's been a lot more successful. Yeah. Now with a good CEO, you get a good coaching appointment. You need to run it like a business. Yep, you get a good coaching appointment. You don't go over the salary cap. Yeah. Um, 
And yeah, so I think a good CEO is crucial to success. Yeah, it all starts from the top down. Because Tony Pinata was Sydney FC CEO. Yeah, he was at Wellington as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, he was. He used to be like a. He worked in like a bank. Mm. Yeah. His businessman. Yeah, have him on a LinkedIn. Businessman. <laughs> yeah, big up Tony Pinata. He was on the the Fox Sports podcast just today. He's actually. a great bloke. Great bloke. Um, just got a message as well. Apparently, like all eleven clubs last year just made losses. I'll have to agree. Yeah, I'd have to uh, uh, because well, you don't I don't have to agree. It's, it's a fact. <laughs> no, it is a fact. No, like, I know Tony Sage um, doesn't make a profit. Yeah, and a lot of people. So every club made a loss. Every club. That's that's bad. So I know Tony Sage doesn't make money, and a lot. You know, no one calls for his head anymore. But there was a few, and there was like the Kenny Low days. Mm. People were saying, you know, get Tony Sage out the door. I was like, no one is gonna. Yeah, otherwise take fold. this club on and openly lose money every week. Yep. You know. Yeah, that, that's most of the Q and A's, I think. Q and A's um, done. Should we move on to our patrons? We should have done this at the start. I our feel patrons, like. you reckon? Yeah, we need to plug plug them at the start. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we'll, no, big ups to patrons. There's five of you guys now. Yep, we're plugging we're plugging you at the end. Um, David Clark on our first tier. Yeah. So you get Joe get. I don't know. Ooh. Yeah, the first tier is the the, the shagger tier. The shagger tier. So yeah, we have got three on the shagger tier. We've got Joe Clark, Glenn. Oh, I know how to pronounce it now. Go on. Olivero, not Oliviero. Uh, Glenn Olivero, Jordan Smith on the two dollar tier. Big ups, love you guys. So Jordan Smith, we weren't sure if he he gave money last week, but yeah, like we, like we we roasted him. We roasted him for like we kind of no- bullied him into giving. We up. Bu- <laughs> <laughs> which that's, I kind of feel bad about. But. That's true. Um, why is that? That's that's his. Oh, that's David. Oh, okay, okay. I, okay. We, we- <laughs> just giving out his email. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no one heard that. Um, and for our ultimate shagger tier, yeah, uh, tier. big ups, uh, Fraser. Fraser and Martin. Who's the other one? And Jordan, Jordan Waters. Big ups. Love you guys. That took way too long. Yeah. Um, yeah, doing anything during the week, Trent? Um, the rest of the week? No, busy weekend though. What am I, what am I long, long weekend. Need to get a haircut this week. Need to get a haircut. You look, the hair's quite long. Yeah, every two weeks I like to get a haircut. Okay. So, yeah, okay. just get a fresh fade. Fair. But where do you go? Uh, just down the road from me. Okay. I'm not going to disclose where. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, just down the road. Okay, just down the road. Thanks to the um, Football Centre for hosting us. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, lovely FIFA grade AstroTurf. Yes. Lovely. If you want to be coached, if you want to play five side. Yeah, if you want to verse me on Thursday night, sign up here. Sign up for Thursday night. Um, if you want to host a birthday party for your children, yep. also do that here. Yep. All Fair right. enough. Do they do, 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 do like 18th or 21st? No, but <laughs> I think, this is exclusive information. Okay. There might be a, uh, a liquor license coming. Interesting. Interesting. I don't know how it's going to work, but it's, it's coming. It's going to be fun. It's coming. Um, so no 18th or 21st yet, but potentially. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think on, on that note, uh, leave it there. Cheers for watching. If you're still up to this bit. Um, yeah. Ciao. Bye. Cheers. How do I stop this? <laughs>